Welcome to Retire Hour, the weekly show discussing income planning, investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Complete retirement education. Hear from our financial advisors, CPA, estate planning attorney, and Medicare advisor every week. This is Retire Hour. Welcome into Retire Hour, the weekly show that helps you stay up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. I'm your host, Matt Goolsby, and I'm back from a little vacation last week, hung out with my friends, went fishing. But this week, we're back, and we've got Julie Newton, an advisor with Market Advisor Group Kansas City coming up here uh, right, right out of the gate. But don't want to miss later in the show, we'll be talking with Corey Hebert about if you're not Medicare age yet and you still have to pick your own health plan, what are some considerations you might have out there if you have some special prescriptions? And then also in our estate planning segment, we'll be talking with Gerald Eidelman of Eidelman Law Firm about what is a life estate and how can that benefit sometimes in a situation where if you're a blended family and you have to maybe pass some assets on to your kids, but maybe what if you pass away first, then what happens to your spouse? And we'll be talking about that in the estate planning segment. But that kind of ties into some things here that Julie has to talk about us with, right? I mean, Julie, you have a story about Mark and Joanne, and they're a blended family as well, right? Yes. Yes, they are. So uh, Joanne has three children from a previous marriage. Mark has four. And so they're just kind of jumping into things. Um, the, the biggest issue right now is they don't have any kind of estate plan. They don't have a will. They don't have a trust. They don't have any power of attorney documents. So if they were to get into an accident together and not be able to make financial decisions or medical decisions, they have no one that can do that for them. So that's a really big concern for Mark and Joanne. Um, the other thing that is a big concern for them is they have um, a really nice nest egg set aside. Uh, Mark's 67, still working. Joanne is 63. But Mark self-manages their investments, which isn't a bad thing um, necessarily, but what typically happens in that situation is one spouse manages the portfolio, the other spouse manages other things, and neither one of them have time for sort of that crossover for learning the others, you know, what they do day to day. And so with the investments, what's really frightening about that is if one spouse were to pass away and leave behind the spouse that hasn't been managing that portfolio, what happens in that situation? Yeah. So that's a really big concern. That That is, I, I, I think I even talk about that in one of my classes, I think it's a social security class, that when you lose a spouse, it's not uncommon for one partner to have certain duties and in the household, maybe mm -hmm. one balances the checkbook or pays all the bills or, or you know, maybe takes care of the yard and the other person helps with a lot. You can have different roles in a relationship, but that is so true. That is a risk a lot of people maybe haven't. Uh, addressed enough for if their spouse passes away and that's the spouse that handles the finances or the investments or that's the leader, who takes over in that instance? And oftentimes, um, or is that a surviving spouse going to be okay? Well, and that's, that is the big question right there. Um, you know, first of all, you have to think about it. When a spouse dies, typically there is a grieving period. What that time frame looks like for one person is not the same as another. But think about how that happens. So let's say that your spouse passes away, the spouse managing the portfolio, um, and you spend six months just trying to heal, which is perfectly normal. But what happens in that six months if, one, stock market crashes? Uh, two, what happens because suddenly you're a single tax filer? Um, three, what happens if required minimum distributions pop up? So there's all of these things that could happen. Um, and if you're not working with a team that can help you manage that and be prepared for that, then you are putting your, your entire investment portfolio at risk. Um, and that's one of the things I hear so much from people. One of their biggest concerns, don't want to run out of money. Second biggest, biggest concern, I want to make sure my spouse is taken care of when I'm not here to, to look after them or, or help them. You know, And so um, in that situation, if you're managing that portfolio and you pass away, what is going to happen to your spouse? What is going to happen to their financial future? So you said the, um, Mark has four and um, she has three. Is this the Brady Bunch? <laughs> Pretty close. I mean, Pretty I close. guess I'll okay, get No, that was only three and three, right? They had three. Well, I guess he brought Alice over, right? So they, yeah, yeah, he well, brought yeah, Alice. Yeah, so, so there yeah. you go. There is close nine. Enough. Yeah, Pretty there. much. <laughs> but so now when I find people that are doing their own investments, well, I feel like probably is their biggest blind spot 
is probably estate planning, but really taxes, don't you think? Because taxes happen every year. You don't have to do your estate plan every year, but it you know warrants staying up to date on it. But taxes right. happen every year, and and those self managers sometimes don't understand there's there's tax strategies that they can do to either mitigate their taxes they owe or not pay taxes until they take a withdrawal from the account. And that's where the conversation is going with Mark and Joanne. Specifically, they have um, probably about uh, 25%, maybe 30% of their portfolio is non-qualified assets, which means every dividend that they earn in that portion is taxable in the year in which they receive it. Okay, So that's one piece. So it's kicking out a pretty significant chunk of of dividends every year, which is that's normal when you're when you're picking stocks and you know kind of making sure that you're getting those dividends. That's your goal is income, but that income is driving your tax situation. So if you're focused on picking those dividends over here, but you're not focused on those tax consequences on the other side, then you could be causing yourself a lot of tax pain unnecessarily. And so it's really important to have a balance. Took the words right out of my mouth. It's very important to have a team. <laughs> it's like, God, have you been doing this for a while, Julie? Matt, but you know, Maybe. With, with what happened in 2022 in the stock market, when the market dropped like 20% and funds were down, I don't think really it hit a lot of people on their taxes when they filed them in the year 2023 for the year 2022. Last year, with all the growth in the market, I think a lot of people that have investments that are not in retirement accounts, in the, like you said, non qualified accounts and brokerage mm-hmm. accounts, joint account, however they need to be titled. If they're not an IRA or 401k, those taxable accounts, they're going to have a lot of people that have taxable consequences when they start doing their taxes this year, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. That's definitely one of the things they're going to run into. I talked with and talked with another couple just a couple of days ago where they had a really big forced stock buyout and, you know, their tax situation in for 23 is going to be pretty painful for them because they had that um, forced buyout of stock. And so it's a huge tax consequence. But if, you know, if things like that happen and you're managing that portfolio and you're not working with a team who's looking at those consequences, who's helping you sort of figure out, okay, where should we put that immediate taxation or where should we, you know, kind of um, divert the tax or, or put it off, defer the tax? If you're not looking at all of those things, you can cause yourself a whole lot of tax pain That's really fast. So true. And guys, if you don't have a team that you can rely on when maybe your untimely demise or one day when you're not here and you've passed away and you leave your spouse out there, or maybe you're someone like yourself out there that maybe self-manages and you don't have someone that can help you put these pieces all together, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. Or you can hop right over to that website, retirehour.com, check out past episodes, submit a question, or subscribe to the podcast. But of course, you can always book your complimentary visit with this complete retirement team in any of our offices across Kansas or Missouri. Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Rick Everett this week, right after this. Enjoy Retire Hour? Like us on Facebook for highlights and clips from the show. Go to facebook.com slash retire hour or visit retirehour.com for more info. Welcome back into Retire Hour, the weekly show that helps you stay up to date on everything retirement. You know, everything retirement, That's maybe that's a good show name, everything retirement. That would work. And speaking of show names, we've got the host of Ion Retirement in here, <laughs> financial advisor Rick Everett with Market Advisory Group Wichita. You know, um, thanks for uh, thanks for filling in for Larry this week because he's, he's, he's taking some time off. Absolutely. So, well, you know, you had a story when you and I were talking about what to talk about this week on the radio where you said some guy at a at a who worked with a national brokerage firm. And this is not a mom and pop shop. This it's is one a, of the big names. This is a, one of the big names out there. They're not on every corner. It's not that guys. It's not those guys. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the guys that, you know, anyways, but they, they might even be tied to a bank. Mm, who knows? Could be. Could be. So, but this person got some really bad advice 
it sounds like, and we're actually even going to talk about it later in our CPA segment. Cause we're going to get the we're going to get the CPA side of this and say, mm-hmm. "Wow!" But tell us a little bit about what you and I were talking about. Well, it it's always reaffirming when you think you might be tap dancing around tax landmines, and the CPA comes in to hear the story, and his eyes get big. Yeah. But it was a an initial visit with a client, uh, and they came in, and of course. When we bring people in, Matt, we're just sitting down and talking and getting to know them in this first visit. And so through that discovery process, uh, this person shared with me that they had a desire to buy uh, a new home while they were under the care of this other advisor. And they were going to have to take out uh, in the neighborhood of a quarter million dollars you know, to fund this new home. Net. Net. (laughs) And that's a very important word. That is very important. And their advisor uh, that they had been working with instructed them that it wasn't necessary to withhold taxes at the time of this quarter million withdrawal out of an IRA account. So this financial advisor at a nationwide... I don't know if I use the word respected, a well-known brand. Recognizable. Recognizable brand. That's probably the best way to say that. An advisor that should know better, probably. One would think. Well, but if they don't know tax advice, if they don't have the tax component, this probably doesn't have a happy ending, does it? Uh, No, to the tune of about an $81,000 tax bill. Well, what was the advisor's thought process here of you didn't need to withhold taxes when you take out a quarter million dollars plus? What the prospective client shared with me is that his advisor told him it would be better to leave that money with the advisor so that that money could continue to work for the client. Or work for the advisor? Uh, Ergo, yes. (laughs) So that's, that's what I'm hearing. Maybe that person's not operating in a fiduciary standard. Maybe that person's not looking out for that person's best interest. I'm glad they found you. Did they they come to one of our classes? They did. And um, in fact, uh, the initial meeting that we had to just sit down and have a visit, the client came back a second time, and they're now a client of ours. Oh, that's good. That's good. So now they're getting the tax advice with the investment Mm -hmm. advice, and they're not going to be burned on taxes to the tune of 80 plus thousand dollars. We had uh, Joshua Sikora. Uh, he came in to that initial meeting, that initial get to know one another. And the the prospective client, you know, we're on TV, we're on radio, we're talking all the time about having a complete retirement team to make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed in, in this transition from working to retirement. And so they were very impressed that the CPA could come in right there Yesterday at another meeting I had with another client, I had both Joshua Sikora and our lead estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman, came in just to do a meet and greet. And, you know, a lot of people, it's not smoke and mirrors. This is what we do. How about that? You know, the the thing that gets me, and I've been talking about this this past year in our classes, is when you pay for the financial advisor and you pay someone to do your taxes, and maybe you pay someone to do your estate plan. And of course, you don't normally pay someone to help you with your Medicare, but that Medicare can have consequences with your taxes and your investments. If, you're, if you have all those different people, do you think you're paying every one of those people some, something to help you with that service? Mm-hmm. But do you think it's equitable or do you think it's very functioning, maybe uh, optimized way? Or do you think there's a better way of doing it where you're paying all those different professionals, but you're the one that has to relay all the information between them? I would go bananas, Matt. I mean, there's a lot to remember. And then the other thing is, and we've talked about it on the show before, like the game of telephone, you you know, you tell somebody one thing, you're all sitting in a circle. And by the time it gets whispered into the ear of the the person and comes full circle, it's a completely different message. You know, I met a nice couple on my uh, vacation, my fishing trip, Matt and Paige. And they said, you know, Matt, that's great that you guys have that all under one roof. We have a financial advisor, we have a tax person, and we have our estate plan attorney. And you know what? They get on a call every year with us, but I don't really feel like they're working together. I feel like they're more worried about upsetting the other one and, and rocking the boat. So we have all those people, but we're not getting the whole plan together 
because we think our professionals are too afraid of upsetting the other one and, and, and telling them, oh, you need to dump them and go somewhere else. But they don't even feel like they're getting the full service. Uh, they don't get, they're not getting the benefits of working with the collaborative team. Well, and, and here's the thing that's key. You know, a person may have a financial advisor and a CPA and an estate planning attorney, but are they all on the same team? Exactly. And, and that is the, the benefit of what we do day in and day out here. Well said there. I'm glad we have this recorded because I might, I might watch this like seven times and try and memorize how you <laughs> said that. <laughs> so if you don't have a complete team that's working together, maybe you have the team, but are they working together? Or are you the person relaying all the information between the, the professionals? And do you trust yourself not to drop the ball? If you are listening there and you don't have this team, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or hop over to that website, retirehour.com, check out past episodes, but you can book that complimentary visit with this complete retirement team in any of our offices across Kansas or Missouri, or of course, we do virtual calls as well. Well, we'll be right back with Danny Goolsby of Market Advisor Group, Wichita. Stay tuned. Want more Retire Hour? Visit retirehour.com where you can catch up on past episodes, learn more about the team, and find a complete list of showtimes and stations near you. Go to retirehour.com. I've been loving this weather out there. It's uh, it's been nice. <laughs> Don't often get sixty degree days in January, like right? Everyone we can get, right? Sure, sure. Get the convertible out and have a have a fun time. So we'll pay for it later. Nothing's free, right? It's always about trade offs. Mm -hmm. So you have someone that is a new client, and you've been working with them for about six months now. Um, did you uh, did you have a specific story that you wanted to share with us about this situation with this client? It, yes, uh, we we talk about tax planning all the time, as you know, and um, so we had met someone from a, one of the classes we have done around the metro. He came to one of our classes there, and then subsequently came into the office for a consultation. And this is about six months ago, uh, again for our first appointment, <clears throat> and then he we talked back and forth, and then we brought in the CPA and had kind of a brief conversation there. And then we parted company and that's the last I had any contact with him for uh, about six months. And then come to find out later, uh, late last year, he called up kind of in a panic and wanted to visit with, with me and one of the CPAs here about some tax planning that we had talked about uh, on, a, on, a grad, uh, on a macro basis last year. So we sat down and we talked with this individual and come to find out he had his money through his employer in a very, so it was still in a 401k, but he had it with, with one of the name brand custodians, if you would. Okay, I mean, Very recognizable brand. As very recognizable. Said earlier. That's, that's a good way to say it. Very recognizable brand. Yes, you, yes, you would know it. And so we were talking about tax planning and we referenced our conversation that we'd had previously. He said, yes, well, I find myself in a pickle because... I talked to my custodian before I left my employer, and they said that they could help me out with that Roth conversion plan. And so they, they said, we can do that too, you know, quote, unquote. So, uh, so uh, that's, again, as I said, that's the last I had heard with him until this most recent time. Well, come to find out when we got back together the second time, he was relaying to us what he had done through his custodian that he had caused himself some pain. He didn't realize it. So the first thing that I wanted to share with this morning is he recognized that he had a problem on top of the problem he had when we, that we talked about previously. And that problem was the do it yourself or, and, or the very customer service oriented uh, phone rep at this big, large custodian said, Hey, we can do that for you too. And so he said, okay, well, if you can do it, just, just do it right there. And let's do that Roth conversion, and I want to do it for, let's say that I want to convert $40,000. Uh, I'm sorry, it was $90,000. It was $90,000 mm. of, in, of income he wanted to convert. It was going to generate about $30,000 worth of taxes. 
And so when uh, now this is the second meeting that we're having with him, and again, Robert, the CPA, and we're talking with him about this, this 30,000, and it came to light, I said, so when did you pay the taxes oh on this conversion? Gosh, you're kidding me. And so he said, what do you mean by that? And I, said, I said, well, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you do a Roth conversion, taxes are due at the time of conversion. And if not, then there's uh, other problems that come up from that. And he says, well, I guess I didn't pay those yet. Oh, my gosh. And I said, well, we need to talk about that then. So this was late last year that the, we had our second meeting, and this was all coming to light. So I, as I said, he recognized that he had a problem on top of the problem he thought he was taking care of. Uh, he Number one. Number two, he attempted to solve this problem without professionals, people who don't uh, are not in this day in and day out. And with all, uh, with all respect, do the customer service person on the other end of the phone that was, he was talking to in his 401k, the person on the other end of the line was not qualified to give him tax advice. He was almost a me too. Here's, here's just what absolutely is just eating away at me. We've had the whole first half hour of the show, we've had three financial advisors in here and everyone has been talking about someone that had another advisor or another company that wasn't helping them with their tax planning side of it. And I'm sitting here thinking, gosh, this is so weird. We're financial advisors. We pick the investments. We're helping them with the stocks and the bonds and the allocation, the income streams, and the, the RMDs and the IRAs, all the analogies and acronyms that are out there. We're helping with that. But we're sitting here talking about more taxes than we are investments. And really probably the difference comes down to, correct me if I'm wrong, you normally do. <laughs> Father and son here again. So you can get, get, have that, love that dynamic. You know, the, any financial advisor can go pick investments. What really sets apart and makes the difference is the tax planning alongside the investments. So true, so true. The more efficient you are from a tax standpoint, the better your investments perform. But it's the problem where it's, it's, it's easy when it's in, it's in a professional's hand. It, the, the act or the, the planning looks easier. And so if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, you think you can handle it, but it's actually the coordination it's the coordination of one professional working with another professional for the benefit of the client that is the missing piece. So here's someone that had a underpayment penalty with the IRS. If he didn't make a tax payment because of this conversion. By January 15th. By January 15th. And again, the 401k custo uh, customer service person, he was helpful, but he was out of his league and he should not have been t giving tax advice in the manner that he was. Well, go home and look at your guys' statements out there, guys. Go... Pick out your 401k statement, look at your brokerage statement, look at, look at the bottom. It's going to say, we do not give legal or tax advice, and that's on you. And then you have to go coordinate all that stuff. And if you don't have a team that's collaborating together and coordinating together, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. Or you can pop over to that website, retirehour.com, check out past episodes, subscribe to the podcast, submit a question, or... Sign up for a visit. Just see what's going on in your situation because what do you not know? How do you know what you don't know? Have you ever searched the internet for, hey, Mr. Internet, what do I not know that I need to know? That's not how the search engine works. You have to know a nugget of it. And yeah, you're listening to the show to get help with your situation, but how do you really know everything's addressed out there? Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more with Corey Hebert of Market Medicare Advisors talking about someone that wasn't Medicare age and what did they do with their health situation? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Want to watch Retire Hour? Subscribe to the Retire Hour channel on YouTube by visiting youtube.com slash retire hour. While you're there, you can catch up on all the past episodes. Also, check out retirehour.com for TV showtimes near you. Got, we've got someone that I haven't seen in a while because you've been out of town kind of hanging out and taking some time off after your busy open enrollment season. I've been taking some time off fishing with your uncle and my buddies and <laughs> doing stuff like that. But, you know, you had a story about someone that's not on Medicare. So how help me understand this. How do you how does someone that's not on Medicare benefit from meeting with market Medicare advisors? 
Yeah, Matt, it's uh, odd enough. Yeah, I, I was out of town there for a little bit, getting some time off. Open enrollment's great. You get to see all your people. Um, but then it's time to get back to work and, and dive right back into the real world. And um, your, your dad actually brought me a, a really unique case and um, been uh, dipping our toes into a little bit of new territory and, and some new services that we're offering here at Market Medicare Advisors. And, and that comes with uh, ACA planning. And I normally find when I say the word ACA, <laughs> I was gonna say, what is it? I'm sure you get a lot of people nodding. It's like, yeah, there's so many acronyms in this industry. Yeah. It's like ACA, RMD, QCD. It's like, what, what is all this stuff? Yeah. What is ACA? So, so ACA, um, th there are really four or five different names that'll go by and you'll hear it called, um, Obamacare. You'll hear it called the marketplace. Um, when in all technicality, it, it is the affordable care act. And uh, the Affordable Care Act, um, whenever Obama was talking about uh, bringing this, this universal health care, health care available to all, um, it, it's not the maybe the type of universal health care people were expecting where we, we jack up the taxes and everybody ends up paying a lot more and everybody gets free health care. Um, but it's turned into... Not yet. <laughs> I'll go with not yet, but sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But um, what, what it's turned into is it's turned into a, a health marketplace where everybody uh, is guaranteed an option to have health care um, to some extent and for some people uh, tax subsidies on that health care to uh, help them out with that that pricing. But you help people with their health insurance even if they're not on the Affordable Care Act. If they have higher income and maybe they retire at age 60, they need to figure out how they're going to have health coverage from age 60 to 65, right? And that's what you guys have been working on. Yeah, so that that actually, Matt, in that case, we, we still look at Affordable Care Act. We just look at plans without the tax subsidy attached. Interesting. So, so we look at the full costing. And that's what plan. the Affordable Care Act did. It, it really it really wiped away and kind of yeah, what standardized you, in some way like they did with Medicare plans. Mm -hmm. what, what used to be just called kind of the, the private health care market is, is more or less uh, completely gone. Yeah. And uh, anything that we do look into, the, the federal government has their hand in it in some way, shape, or Which form. Which makes it better, right? Oh. Mm, that's sarcasm it, for anyone it, listening it, out it there. It makes it more rules. We'll put it that way. And then you, then more confusing. And so yeah. speaking of confusing, that's why you're helping this gal. And she, she let's call her Sue. Mm. Sue has MS, right? I mean, so this is not, yeah. this is something serious. And she's, she's not on Medicare yet. Yeah, so, so this is um, one, of, one of those uh, heartbreaking stories where Sue does have uh, MS, and unfortunately, um, she uh, unexpectedly did lose her job. And um, Sue was very privileged in her job in that she was paying $49 biweekly wow. for very above average <laughs> health insurance that, wow. that she was getting. And especially with MS, um, there, there are a lot of things that we have to keep up on. And... Um, so, you know, Sue's in uh, a little bit of a panic mode because whenever they brought Cobra uh, up as an option, uh, sometimes that Cobra is a good option. But for her case, her Cobra bill was just shy of $800 a month. So you can go from like 100 bucks a month in health insurance costs to 800 And then, oh, yeah, by the way, to add insult to injury, now you're unemployed. So this is really an, an overwhelming instance here. Thank goodness she had this team that she could come in. She was talking with her financial advisor and she goes, I just lost my job suddenly. I need to worry about health insurance. And he goes, hang on, I've got a guy. And he goes down the hall and gets you, right? Yeah, and, and she was um, a, a little bit skeptical when I first walked in because Danny says he's grabbing someone from market Medicare advisors. And to she come goes, I'm not help. a Medicare yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But uh, no, a ACA is, is definitely uh, an awesome area that, that our section has been able to get into. Now, the, the biggest question that, that we had with her and where I am, am so blessed to have the the people around me that I do is um, whenever we talk about ACA and these tax subsidies, it's, it's always this balancing game of where can we put her income to keep her lifestyle the way it is and not not sacrifice her, her needs and wants in life, but also put her into some affordable options for health care and, and, and make sure that um, we, we get those good tax subsidies. So uh, beyond even just me and Danny helping to kind of play out, uh, Danny, what, what's her budget look like? What's her income going to look like? Uh, getting uh, Josh and, and Lauren involved and talking about, you know, how, how these, are there any accounts that we can move into that, that are going to be those tax deferred or, or not look at like that um, uh, affect that modified adjusted gross income? Um, so for, well, for you her sound case, like a tax person, but you're, you're a healthcare advisor. It's so, I, so interesting. I am not a tax person. I've heard Josh say a couple words. So I try to repeat them and say smart, <laughs> but you know, when you get out of your lane, as far as, you know, when you're, you're getting a topic and saying, well, gosh, we, you know, if Sue, if we need to worry about your income, 
we need to work with the financial advisor. We need to work with your tax professional, Joshua and Lauren. And we need to make sure that we're, we're working together so we don't disqualify you from the Affordable Care Act or we don't cost you more for your Medicare with IRMA or we don't cause an instance where you dis get disqualified for your prescription drug assistance. There's all kinds of things that your, your health care advisor in retirement needs to be working with the financial advisor and the tax person. Yeah, and Matt, the, the biggest instance that, that it happens in my office is whenever we are, start to deal with Medicare, uh, Social Security is instantly a, a topic that comes up because, you know, premiums are withheld from Social Security. Um, we apply for Medicare on the Social Security website, and uh, anybody that, that's been into my office, they know there comes a point where I stop and I say, okay, I'm going to pause for just a moment. I know enough about Social Security to be a little dangerous, but we're getting into waters that, that I'm not comfortable and talking about. And, and that's when I run down the hallway and, and try to grab one of my uh, financial advisors because you guys are just, you're w more well-versed. So she's got MS. She must have some very specific prescription requirements. And did you help her walk through those and how those would be covered? Yeah. So with, with her case, uh, and one of the most difficult things that we're navigating and, and making her healthcare decision is we, we looked out on the market and there were hundreds of plans available. The very first thing that we did was narrow it down to which plans does her doctor accept? That's important. That, that is most important. That's pretty her. important. I, I do not want to change those doctors, especially with everything going on. Um, the second biggest question then comes down to uh, what prescription drugs are we are we currently taking? Um, so for her, uh, a lot of her drugs are are fairly moderate, uh, generics, uh, one brand name. But she's got one drug that we have we're having an interesting time navigating how the billing is going to be done on this drug. When you say billing, why would you be involved in how it gets billed? <laughs> because to the best of my ability, I, I'm trying to to make sure that they can expect. Uh, and project what they're going to spend on the calendar year. And so some of that boils down to if that prescription is administered in the hospital or if she takes it out of the hospital, right? Bingo. So so this is one of the areas where um, Medicare is so easy on this because Medicare has a clear and defined, um, whether it's a Part B drug or a Part D drug, but uh, the ACA marketplace is not quite caught up in those terms. So what we're actually having to do is um, we, we, we have to contact her her doctor and her doctor's office, and uh, for the medication that her doctor administers to her, um, we have to find out what the billing code is whenever they administer that medication. Then whenever we get that billing code, we have to contact the insurance company and ask them, hey, whenever you get this billing code, does it count towards the deductible? Does it count towards an inpatient care? And that's going to decide um, for me and her specifically, we've narrowed it down to two plans. Are we going to go with a plan that's got the higher deductible and a much lower premium? Or is it worth it to pay that premium and just get rid of that deductible? And it's all going to depend. It was just really funny because whenever we plugged this pr prescription drug in, uh, it didn't show up on the prescription formulary hmm. because it's not a prescription. That's not how it's billed. It, it's billed mm -hmm. as a treatment mm -hmm. and exactly what treatment it's billed as. Depends on how it's going to be covered. It's somewhere in a stack of 500 pages. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to navigate this stuff on your own? I mean, gosh, your health situation changes on you. Your job situation changes on you. You're not eligible for Medicare. Do you have a team? I mean, what level of service are you getting where you're at? Do you have someone that calls your doctor and says, how's this going to get billed? looking at your medications. If you don't have this team helping you, reach out at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or hop over to that website, retirehour.com, and book your complimentary visit today with this complete retirement team. We'll be right back with Gerald Eidelman of Eidelman Law Firm right after this. Got retirement questions? You can submit your financial questions to be answered by the Retire Hour team by going to retirehour.com and clicking submit a question. We may even answer your question on air. Visit retirehour.com to ask your retirement questions today. You know, we've been talking about taxes, it seems like, in every single segment this week. Are you and I going to talk about taxes? Or uh, we... I hope not. No, you hope not. <laughs> you hope not. We've got lead estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman here. And you and I met with someone that watches our TV show, Eye on Retirement. 
hosted by Rick Everett. And they said, you know, I have some questions on my plan. So he came in, he didn't bring anything, and that's sometimes okay. Sure. But if you get into specific questions, you were wanting to see the deed, and, and you know, he didn't have that with him. Right. But this is an interesting story because we'll talk so often about blended families, and they were a blended family in a way. He had a son from a previous marriage, but they also had children together. He wanted this farm ground to go to his son that he had previously before the marriage. And he, he set it up with what's called a life estate. So tell us about what a life estate is and how that works differently than a trust. Okay, so a life estate is basically you're granting somebody the right to use or profit from a piece of property, real property, uh, with the ultimate beneficiary being a third party uh, who doesn't have ownership of the property until the life estate owner passes away. So in this instance, he's going to own, let's call him Sam. Mm -hmm. So Sam and Bev. Sam is going to, he owns this farm. He wants to give it to his first son. But this farm is, is generating like $30,000 a year in, in revenue. It's, it's sizable. Mm -hmm. And she's, they're both, while they're married and they're both alive, they're both living on that income. If he would just deed it to his son on his passing, that $30,000 a year, that would be, Gone from, gone her from her income. Sure. So she loses a social security check. She loses the farm income. There's a different way to set it up with this life estate where it can, she can still benefit from that income. Correct. But then when she passes away, then his first son inherits it. That's right. That's exactly the so way So it's it a different way of doing something that a trust can often do. Yeah, and it has limitations. Well, uh, everything well. does. <laughs> well, <laughs> Everything's got trade-offs, right? Right. We've been yeah. enjoying all this warm weather. We're going to get <laughs> negative two just as soon as we turn, our, <laughs> turn around. But, you know, um, this was something that when he brought it up, I think he'd, he'd worked with either another attorney or even done it on his own. Mm -hmm. But if the deed's not titled correctly, if it's not structured correctly, this can blow up and let alone it doesn't protect you from Medicaid, right? That's right. It, what, what happens is a life estate in general, uh, is treated as an asset for Medicaid purposes. So if something were to happen to Beth... Uh, Bev. Bev. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> you had to be right. Uh, uh, to her, then they would look at her assets and the life estate would be valued as an asset based on the number of years, you know, life expectancy and so forth and would be counted against her. Interesting, so this life estate really could put her in jeopardy for any, if she needed long-term care. That's right, that is correct. Okay, that interesting. Correct. You know, do you think, is, is this something that gets used very common or does it normally just people go with a trust route? It generally people go with a trust. Life estates are fairly uncommon because with a trust you can create a life estate without having the issues with Medicaid uh, because you can give somebody the right to occupy the property or profit from the property without giving them any type of lifetime ownership of the property. Okay, so that's important, ownership. So if they only get the income, if they benefit from the income, so Sam, Sam passes away, Bev's getting the $30,000 a year. Who technically owns the farm while Bev's getting that $30,000 a year? Well, ultimately, as a, as a son... But she has the right for her lifetime to, to benefit, the from, benefit from the the property. So, here's where my mind's going. In the in the year 2026, we have the exp expiration of the Tax Cuts and Job Act, and I don't care who's president, Republican, Democrat, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck. Yeah. I don't care. It's a math problem. Taxes have to go up to pay sure. for all this money we've printed, and. If they drop, if they change some kind of estate law or if they change uh, the estate tax exemption where it's like, I think in 2001, it was $600,000. Right, right. So in 2001, it was, if you had more than $600,000, if your value of your estate was more than $600,000, you were taxed at like 40 or 50% on anything that went above right. that. So if estate exemptions change, Sam dies, Bev's still alive, receive. Bev can't do anything to protect it from any estate taxes for his son, can she? Correct. Correct. It's fixed, and depending on the value of this property, if it exceeds the state tax exemption, then his son 
will be paying, or not his son, his estate, will be paying a significant amount of money in, in taxes. state taxes. So you got Sam and Bev, Sam's dead, Bev's alive, but then if, 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 if it was put in a trust and not a life estate, the trustee could make changes potentially and have more flexibility than just a life estate. Well, you could, and actually when we set up trust, we provide for the possibility of changes, which you can account to in the trust because you can give as much detail and put as many provisions as you want. A life estate is, is written on a deed. You can't write, you know, the Constitution. And, and, you know, <laughs> and you know just, so many characters. That's right. I mean, <laughs> like b bigger than a tweet. So this is so this is just one way to go, but it's probably not the best way to go. No, I I don't think so. I think sometimes, and especially, it gets confusing. If you need long term care, it gets confusing for Medicaid. Uh, some, depending on who's who's actually assessing your case. Some people may include the full value. Some people may include just the the income. So you're running all kinds of uh, you're leaving all kinds of opportunities for something to go muck. Certainly so. And you know how would how would a financial advisor even know what to ask you or even point out in your situation of hey, we really need to probably go have a discussion with an attorney here. It's not that simple, guys. Financial advisors out there that see things, they might not bring them up because they're not licensed. And you need a team helping you so you don't have expensive mistakes. So reach out right now for a complimentary visit at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or hop over to that website, retirehour.com. We'll be right back with Joshua Sakura, lead CPA of Market Tax Services, right after this. Want to take Retire Hour with you on the go? Subscribe to Retire Hour wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Subscribe and you'll be the first to get new episodes every week. Go to retirehour.com to get the link to your favorite podcast provider. Welcome back into Retire You know, as we, as we, I didn't finish retire hour. <laughs> you did not. Welcome back into retire hour. I'm in a hurry. I've been running short on time. Uh, you know, as we wrap up this week's episode, uh, we've got Joshua Sikor, lead CPA with Market Tax Services, and you're going to give us the rest of the story from Rick Everett's story earlier in the show when he was talking about yeah. this well-named, recognizable firm, national firm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not on every corner. They're not those guys. Maybe they're associated with banks. Every other corner. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, or <laughs> every other ATM. So, but this financial advisor should know better than to tell a client to take a quarter million dollars plus out of their IRA and not withhold any taxes. Yeah, yeah. I uh, was very shocked when I heard that little nugget of advice that was was given. And um, while I can speculate why, that's that's immaterial for this purpose. Um, but yeah, I mean, so so uh, when when Rick Rick and the prospective client was having this conversation. They, it became very evident very quickly there's going to be some problems. The taxes are still going to be due. Those taxes probably could have been determined at the time he took the withdrawal and withheld, but they weren't, so now they're going to be due. You know, when we when we work with, with uh, clients on this, we always talk about having the taxes addressed at the same time, and this gentleman is going to find out why, because <laughs> not only does he get a nice little $80,000 tax bill to, to enjoy, which I have a sneaky, But wait, there's more. Oh, but wait, there's more. He also gets to deal with underpayment penalties, which depending on the exact timing on when this all falls out, it could be five or 10 grand at least. An extra five or 10 grand. So if his money that the advisor so wisely said, we're gonna leave this back here and make it work for, I think that was in the advisor's interest, not the client's. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> blink twice if you're here under duress. <laughs> yeah, so that's I'm a radio kidding. show, no one's gonna see you no blink twice. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah. the joke. Sure, sure. But this is catastrophic because do you think the eighty thousand dollars set there it'd have to make 12 16 percent before it's going to even break even on the underpayment penalties right right so it's that money's got a lot of work to do and i don't know that that it did and really it's immaterial because he's now owing voluntary taxes right i have I've, i think we've met one person in all the years we've been doing this that has said they they like paying taxes um, now, these are taxes you didn't even have to pay had you done things the right way the first go around. 
Um, so and not- and I mean, you've used the analogy of misbehaving in church before, so you get the <laughs> the paddling at, at church or the paddling uh, when you get home. This this poor guy is getting it when he gets home, and it's going to hurt twice as much. Maybe going to get a double paddling when his wife finds out how much <laughs> and, and extra tax. I like uh-huh. the voluntary tax. That's yeah. a, the voluntary tax is really a, a unnecessary tax. You didn't have to pay it. That's right. That's right. And I mean, maybe we should thank him for his patriotic contribution. Although the thanks probably goes to back to that other financial advisor for giving the um, not not the best advice in the world. Definitely not the way we typically advise our clients, but that's where it's great having the two of us in the room at the same time because you can tell the tell your client, hey, you should take the distribution for this. And I mean, whether that's the right answer or not, that's a different story. But then I can come in and say, let's deal with these taxes now because I know you don't like paying taxes. So let's pay as little as we can. So, you know, let's so, so the underpayment penalty is what, 5%? Uh, seven or eight percent, depending on when it all falls out. Oh, so yeah, interest rates have come up. So uh-huh. so does the underpayment penalty. Yeah, so yeah. eighty eighty one thousand dollars times. Let's just go seven percent. Let's go months. Mm-hmm. That's fifty six hundred bucks. Yep. So if his portfolio didn't make fifty six hundred bucks, or God forbid, the market would have went down. Yeah, yeah. It's like, not every year is going to be like it was last year, and um, uh, we. I mean, I don't know how the guy was invested. So who's to say he wasn't in, you know, whatever's performing well? Well, and speaking of, maybe we need to talk about this next week. The market did go up last year. A lot of people that have investments in non-retirement accounts, like in a brokerage account or a joint account or a transfer on death or TOD, whatever, yep. they're going to have a lot of tax bills. Or they they're going to sure have some are. extra taxes. And that's going to be something that they should have been working with a team to help mitigate that. And guys, if you don't have a team helping you, how much is it costing you? This gentleman that Rick was working with and Joshua was just talking about had to pay an extra $6,000 in underpayment penalties because he didn't have the complete team. What could not having a complete team be costing you? Well, find out at a complimentary visit with us at 833-888-HOUR or that's 833-888-4687 or hop over to that website, retirehour.com, submit a question, subscribe to the podcast or set that visit with us. We thank you for tuning in this week. Check out our other show, The Rick Host, Eye on Retirement. We'll see you next week. Unless otherwise indicated, all client and prospect names mentioned on this show have been changed to protect the identities of the individuals discussed. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. The content provided is intended for informational and educational purposes only. The views, statements, and opinions expressed herein are those of the individual speakers and not necessarily those of Foundations and its affiliates. The information contained herein does not constitute an offer to sell any securities or represent an express or implied opinion or endorsement of any specific investment opportunity, offering, or issuer. Any discussion of performance or returns are not indicative of future results. Each individual investor situation is different and any ideas provided may not be appropriate for your particular circumstances. Foundations only transacts business in the states where it is registered or excluded or exempt from registration requirements. Registration as an investment advisor is not an endorsement of the firm by security regulators and does not mean the advisor has achieved a specific level of skill or ability. No legal or tax advice is provided. Always consult with a tax professional. Legal services are offered by Eidelman Law Firm. Tax services offered by Market Tax Services. Market Advisory Group does not provide legal or tax advice. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not in any way refer to investment advisory products. Rates and guarantees provided by insurance products and annuities are subject to the financial strength of the issuing insurance company, not guaranteed by any bank or the FDIC. The guest commentators featured in this show are not investment advisor representatives of foundations and do not provide advisory services. Market Advisory Group does have several investment advisor representatives that can provide such services. This is not endorsed or affiliated with any U.S. government agency, the Social Security Administration, or associated with any federal Medicare program. We do not offer every plan available in your area. Any information we provide is limited to those plans we do offer in your area. Please contact Medicare.gov or 1-800-MEDICARE to get information on all of your options. A Roth conversion may not be suitable for your situation. The primary goal in converting retirement assets into a Roth IRA is to reduce the future tax liability on the distributions you take in retirement or on the distributions of your beneficiaries. The information provided is to help you determine whether or not a Roth IRA conversion may be appropriate for your particular circumstances. Please review your retirement savings, tax, and legacy planning strategies with your legal slash tax advisor to be sure a Roth IRA conversion fits into your planning strategies. All rights reserved.